Hello and welcome to Nuremberg and to our Arm Tech Talks from Embedded World 2024. I'm your host, Tobias McBride, and all week, together with some of our amazing Arm partners, I'm going to be bringing you a glimpse at some of the groundbreaking innovations at this show. And this series is the place for you to discover the latest trends, technologies, and best practices from the Arm ecosystem. So welcome. Welcome back if you've watched our series before, and thank you so much for joining us. We are live every single day, bringing Embedded World to you at home, at work, wherever you are around the world. As I mentioned, our partners are showcasing some of the latest developments on what is the world's most pervasive and efficient compute architecture that 70% of the world's population uses. That, of course, is ARM. And we're going to be highlighting some amazing AI-powered use cases here at Embedded World, showing that the future is built on ARM. Well, as you've seen from the title, and as you can probably see from the logo behind me, today we are with Raspberry Pi. And who better to talk about Raspberry Pi and what they're up to when it comes to ARM and AI than CEO Evan Upton. Evan, welcome. Thank you so much. Good it's to an see absolute you. pleasure yeah, to welcome, have you. Welcome to Raspberry Pi. This is awesome. The yeah. booth is rocking. So it's an absolute pleasure, as I say, to have you on this series. Why don't you talk to us a bit more? You know, we can't talk about AI without talking about ARM, and you've mm -hmm. got some amazing AI-powered use cases that we're going to get to in a second. Yeah. Um, but what many people may not realize is just how much edge AI you can run on the CPU and you can run on Raspberry Pi. So why don't you talk to us a bit about your approach to as a edge AI yeah. at Raspberry Pi? As you see, the, yeah, we've been shipping ARM-based platforms at Raspberry Pi for a little over 12 years now. And what's been interesting is all the way through that time, people have been finding ways to do things that you would recognize as AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning applications on Raspberry Pi. And as we've progressed from shipping a single core 700 megahertz ARM 11 all the way up to the quad core 2.4 gigahertz Cortex A76, which is inside Raspberry Pi 5, um, that, that kind of watermark has moved up. The, kind yes. of the level, the sophistication of ML workload that will fit onto the CPU of a Raspberry Pi has increased to the point now that you know, we, you know, we're getting kind of, I guess, that kind of Pareto world. Now, where 80%, we reckon roughly 80% of typical machine work learning workloads will run very nicely on those Cortex A76 processes. So really, Raspberry Pi's approach to AI is kind of, I guess it is as it has been probably certainly for the last five years, which is to try to capture a very substantial fraction of the workloads with the CPU. Yeah. Um, and where we, and then when you get to that 20%, you know, that residue, mm. um, the uh, the workloads which do require. And so, you know, what fits well onto CPU? Um, Sparse networks, quantized networks, small yeah. networks, workloads often that are not continuous workloads. You know, frequently um, you find yourself in a situation where you have some other more crude detector which determines whether uh, machine learning needs to happen, which will then trigger a more sophisticated model to do the class to do your classification, to do your your kind of high performance, high precision classification. So those kind of intermittent, quantized, small, sparse workloads they fit very well on the CPU. That residue of larger models mm. or uh, workloads that need to run continuously, those very legitimately get pushed onto accelerator hardware. And really, there, our aspiration is to be the best possible host for third party accelerators. And we'll take a look at one example of that in a moment. Yeah, absolutely. Well, why don't we do that now? Why actually? don't we do let's that, now? Go that now? Let's go to to my Yeah, let's go to the handheld to yeah. my trusted camera operator. Yeah. I'm going to switch cameras now to our other camera. Just to do Alrighty, that. so talk us through what you've got here. Okay, then. so this is. This is a this is a nice what I'd probably classify as a um, a medium uh, yeah I guess a medium difficulty continuous um, uh, AI workload. So if you think that um, you can push um, uh, if you think that you can push um, uh, maybe uh, low hundreds of geops uh, right. of workload on those Cortex A seventy sixes. This is a uh, th this is this would be uh, this this workload here. These this pair of workloads is more kind of one to two TOP workload. Now, what we're looking at here is uh, the Sony IMX five hundred um, uh, machine learning enabled uh, uh, image sensor platform, uh, which will turn into a it's the fruits of our collaboration with uh, very long term collaboration with Sony Semiconductor Solutions. This will turn into a Raspberry Pi product, a shippable Raspberry Pi product in the next few months. Um, what we have is a twelve megapixel. Um, image sensor integrated into a module with a 2T op uh, machine learning accelerator actually bonded onto the back of the sensor dial. So what this is doing is it's returning, uh, it's, it's a standard Raspberry Pi format camera module, but instead of simply returning um, visual data, high quality visual data, it's also performing inference on the module and then returning the results of that inference uh, to the Raspberry Pi. And in fact, you see here we're using a Raspberry Pi 02W. So this is a Amazing. one gigahertz Cortex A53, probably in the kind of middle of our, uh, you know, a medium competence, a medium 
throughput ARM processor solution, yeah. but with this relatively high performance machine learning accelerator uh, attached to the front of it. Here we have it running mobile net, uh, mobile net um, uh, classifier, person detector. Over here, uh, pose net, um, a pose extractor. So same silicon, different models, same silicon, different, different models, models uploaded yeah. from the Pi um, uh, into the accelerator. As you can see, this is, this is uh, you know, I think over time we'll see, you know, we work with a number of accelerator vendors. Historically, of course, done a lot of work with Google, with Google's Coral accelerators, which are USB integrated. Raspberry Pi 5, which adds a PCI Express uh, user port to the board, obviously opens up the opportunity to work with other higher performance accelerator hardware. And so I think what you're going to see from us is, a, I guess, a tiered approach to AI. The idea that at the low end, low to medium end, you have CPU then this will probably be a good example of a medium-end accelerator. And then you can imagine higher performance accelerators often attached to PCI Express. Absolutely. Well, why don't we talk a bit more about, you mentioned there in terms of the CPU use cases you have available. What is it about, in your view, the ARM CPU that makes it so great at running uh, those 80% yeah. of those yeah. use cases? Yeah. Right? Well, the interesting thing is we've seen a couple of things going on. One, we've seen an increase in raw compute capability in the platform over time. You know, a, a uh, quad-core Cortex A76 at 2.4 gigahertz compared to a single core ARM 11 at 700 megahertz, that's something like 150 to 200 X wow. uh, increment in scalar, in conventional yeah. scalar throughput. Um, but what's happened on top of that is you've seen uh, the layering on, uh, first of Neon, uh, mm -hmm. so vastly improved vector performance. And then in the uh, 8.4, uh, in the 8.4 architecture, you see the addition of those 8-bit dot product instructions. I mentioned quantized models earlier. One of the interesting, I mean, I think in any of these, uh, you know, any um, any of these, I guess, eras of AI technology, whether it's the sort of the classic uh, the CNN uh, image classifiers, I think we're starting to see it now actually in large language models as well. Over time, people start off in an FP32 world. They start off in a in a world where every number has to be a full range, a full range 32 bit floating point number. And after a while, people realize that you can get really impressive as long as the, as the tools evolve, people find ways to get broadly equivalent performance out of much more heavily quantized models. Mm. Um, the 8 bit dot product instructions in uh, ARMv8.4, um, obviously, the A76 and Raspberry Pi 5 is the first processor we have which has access to those instructions, gives you another kind of 4x on top of this you know, vast increase in scalar performance vast increase in vector performance, and then increase in performance quantized models. And those are the things that are really stacked together to take you from, you know, back in the Raspberry Pi 1, Raspberry Pi 2 days, really very simple things, things which are really only flirting with the notion of being AI ML, to things which are really full, you know, for, for those, in, particularly for those intermittent workloads, really highly capable um, solutions. Awesome, awesome. Well, you've also got here some really interesting industrial use cases, right? Let's talk a bit about that because Raspberry Pi is synonymous in many ways with some really great work you're doing in the industrial space. So yeah. talk a bit more about what you're showing off here. Yeah, so um, you, know, you imagine where, where have we come from as Raspberry Pi? People know about the Raspberry Pi educational heritage. They know about our hobbyist heritage. Mm. They know how much work we've done to, uh, I guess, to, you know, to get young people. We've had enormous success, particularly in the UK, in getting a new generation of young people excited about computing. But really, the journey that Raspberry Pi has been on over the 12 years we've been selling the product is from being primarily education and enthusiast focused to being really an industrial electronics company. So something like 70, well, well that education market and that enthusiast market are still incredibly important to us. 70 to 80% of Raspberry Pi today are now selling into either what we call embedded applications. So those are, oh, this is OEMs who are outsourcing the intelligence component of their platforms to a Raspberry Pi solution or industrial applications, people taking Raspberry Pis and using them in an industrial context. And this is just a, a lovely example of some of our, actually some of how some of our OEM customers are repackaging Raspberry Pi technology in form factors which are more suitable for deployment in an industrial context. So these are DIN rails, as you can see at the back. We have a huge number of people who are either taking the classic Raspberry Pi form factor, the Raspberry Pi SBC form factor, um, and finding ways to mount that in a DIN form factor, or people who are taking our compute modules and producing more customized solutions, uh, which often integrate some of the additional electronic components which are required to interface with industrial systems while retaining compatibility with the Raspberry Pi ARM software ecosystem. Awesome. Well, there's, there's some really great demos you're showing on Bob's booth. So you know, it's been really great to see these and the work you're doing on the ARM CPU as well. So yeah, yeah. it's very exciting. Awesome. Right. Let's head back and talk about the future. Yeah, right. So if I give this back to our trusty camera operator number two, thank you, sir. And we'll switch back to our to our main camera. So let's uh, let's get in front of the sorry, that's a bit further over. Get, that's fine. There we are. That's good. <laughs> we're good, we're good. So, you know, we've seen some really great stuff on what you can do today, right? With AI and industrial use cases running on ARM and the fantastic work you're doing. But as you look ahead, where do you see 
the future of edge AI, let's focus on AI particularly, with, with Raspberry Pi and ARM. Where do yeah. you see that going? Um, as I say, I think that you know, there is an enormous opportunity to deploy uh, intelligence into the environment particularly into the industrial environment. I think actually that there are, you know, there will always be a limit on uh, human beings' ability to interact with intelligent systems. But the 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 ceiling for um, deploying AI into ambiently into the environment is very high. And it's really just driven by what has a positive return on investment. You can imagine a world in which every street light, every light switch um, has some amount of intelligence embedded in it. Um, our aspiration, particularly at the particularly in the tiny ML world, because what we've not talked about here, all of the stuff we've looked at here is what you'd call big Raspberry Pi, A class Raspberry Pi, Raspberry yeah. Pi running on running Linux. Um, there's a whole other world of the you know, and we see an example up on the at least up on the wall there, you see the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Uh, there's now a whole other world. Of, uh, of Raspberry Pi ARM solutions in the M class space. And I think what I'm most excited about is, is that those drive an opportunity in the sub dollar space. Once you push the costs down below a dollar, you then the number of positive ROI opportunities to deploy intelligence to the world explodes. And so that's probably, you know, what, where do I hope we are in 10 years' time? I hope we're looking at a world in which we're shipping not tens of millions, as we are today, tens of millions of Raspberry Pi ARM solutions which are capable of running, which are capable of running machine learning applications. My hope is that we're shipping hundreds of millions, billions of units which are running machine learning applications. And where, you know, if you look around, you know, you'll see, if you look behind any object in the world, you'll see a Raspberry Pi ARM computer doing some sort of intelligent application. It's a super exciting future. I look forward to that for awesome. sure. Thank you Brilliant. so much, Evan. Uh, thank thank you, you so much for joining our Tech Talk series. Make sure you tune in for the rest of the week. They'll be live on YouTube every single day. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of those Tech Talks. We look forward to seeing you soon.